Hi all, uh, welcome to a new video lecture on database management system and uh, here we will discuss something called the characteristics of the database approach. So in the previous two parts of the video we saw an introduction to DBMS and we started with the, the basic terminology like what is data, database and database management system like that we built the concept now it's time to uh, explore more right so let's see some of the characteristics of database approach and fundamentally over the traditional file processing system so before this database approach what we were having is something called a file processing approach so before moving on to um, this characteristics of dbms uh, i mean database system let's explore what is file processing approach okay so this is something i already told you so because before this database management system that concept and all how we are handling data right so what we will be doing so we, we can simply keep them in some excel sheet or in some files and we can do this processing of the data in a manual manner or you can have uh, some simple programs which can process the data but they are working like in an independent way it's not like a dbms so it's it's a lab means what we are thinking is something that happened before that dbms approaches okay so where data is handled in uh, files and we are um, making use of them so, so something like that so we can call it as a traditional file processing system uh, as the name says that it is something before this uh, database approach I, here uh, each user defines and implements the files needed for a specific software application as part of the programming uh, programming the application so whenever he is programming a particular application he will define uh, as well as he will implement the data needed for him like the uh, in the form of so as it, the data is huge in size we he will keep the data in a file and he will take the data from there and he'll process over it okay the normal uh, application which are processing over files so that is what they are explaining here so for example um, uh, one on user can be the grade reporting office uh, user so as the name says he is supposed to report the grades right so he may keep files on students and their grades so mm, he what is the data available uh, with him he will be having a file of student data and their grades so whenever a particular student uh, name is given say he is supposed to report his grades and other information okay all right uh, and uh, the, so that that is the only thing this particular uh, user or the application program um, representing this user is doing okay and there is a second user as uh, so accounting office user uh, who may keep track of the students fees and their payments okay so this is another one so uh, for the same organization we are using this account office user uh, program also and which is exclusively for handling students fees and their payment details okay so we will get it uh, we can track the uh, whether a particular student paid the fee or not and what about its uh, fee waiver and all other things will be kept here and now you if you are looking at this whether it is grade reporting office user or account office uh, user both of them are commonly using something called the student data right so student data is something common for both and uh, the first one is processing for student data for reporting the grade information when the second one is processing student data for um, hand in this fee and their payment details okay so this is something common so why we have to keep so um, the, but these programs are something they are working independently right so both of them will be keeping their own local copy of the same student information and they will process so th that is the idea the normal programming approach you know so although both users are interested in the data about students each user maintains separate files of the same data right and programs to manipulate these files so because each requires some data that is not available from uh, the other users file right yeah so that about it now uh, the, what is the problem if same data is means in grade um, or reporting office keeping same set, set of student data and grade information and the other one is also keeping student data as common but something extra so as they are having something extra they can't share the common uh, file right so that, that is a problem now if there is any update happening for this student data new student is getting added or a particular student is address changed and all we have to uh, ensure that the change is updated in both uh, uh, files being kept by the grade reporting office and accounting office or some other user programs also right so that, that is a kind of difficulty we are 
are having and also uh, maybe uh, during that fee payment something he the but one person changed his address whether this change in address reflected to the other file also that also we have to ensure so like that uh, so some uh, some kind of us we are the same data multiple copies are kept we have to ensure that the changes are uh, propagated correctly in all copies okay so this redundancy so the data is getting uh, duplicated here right so we can call it as uh, redundancy right the redundancy in defining and storing data results in wasted storage space so that is the first thing storage space is getting wasted right and the redundant effort to maintain common up-to-date data so the common data the student data if you want to keep it up to date you have to repeatedly uh, change it i mean uh, do that updation here and there so that's the kind of difficulty we are having so in the database approach a single repository maintains data that is defined once and then access by various users repeatedly through queries transactions and application programs right so if you are looking at database approach that uh, that is what we are studying so here that information will be kept in a common repository uh, i mean that is your database right so from which different users or user programs will access the data so that is a kind of so if you want to do any changing you just change that database right uh, so that everybody will get that update you don't have to change it in multiple files okay so that that is what we are trying to convey so hope you get an idea about this file processing approach now let's see more uh, characteristics that makes this database approach different from file processing approach so the main characteristics of the database approach versus the file processing approach are first one self describing nature of database system insulation between programs and data and data abstraction this is something available in database approach not in file system uh, right file approach file based approach support of multiple views of the data that is another one sharing of data and multi user transaction processing okay we will see explore one by one the first one is self describing nature of the database system this is something that we already saw in our previous video you know in database approach along with the actual data which is kept in the database we will maintain its description also right so the database itself is describing itself so that is what we call a self describing nature of the database system the database will describe itself in uh, in the form of uh, metadata so that extra data about data is what we call as metadata and that we will keep in something called a database catalog so that is going to do this so the structure information is now clearly uh, clear for everyone right so by looking at this the dbms catalog we will understand exactly what kind of a data it is what about the data types what are all the constraints over the data how much space is being used by the data in the hard disk from which location to which location like that in minute way we will keep this uh, description of the data right the database system contains not only the data base uh, itself but also a complete definition or description of the database structure and constraints right and this definition uh, is what we call as a metadata stored in the dbms catalog which contains information such as the structure of each and every files used the, i mean file means the co that collection of data uh, the type of the data the storage format of each of them and various constraints on the data the information stored in the catalog is what we call as a metadata uh, and this uh, terminologies and all we are already familiar right a general purpose dbms software package is not written for a specific database application so this is the main thing you know if you are looking looking at the file processing approach for each application program uh, it is having its own file of data so data and application program so it is something specific purpose right so for a given application say that uh, grade reporting uh, we are having our own application program and we are depending on a common uh, file for it right uh, that file is containing the student data as well as the grade information and for that um, accounting office uh, program we are using another software that is specific to that particular application which is supposed to do this pay report this payment in information and all um, so fee collection everything it will take care so that is a specific purpose for it right and for that we are maintaining a separate file of student data their fee collection status etc so that is how our file processing approach is working but here if you are looking dbms you know database management system which is a software that is used to, to interact uh, between this user and the actual database so this is something that sits between the user program and the uh, 
actual database that is kept inside uh, the storage medium right and this dbm software if you are looking at it it is not specific purpose like the file processing application it is general purpose okay so in the sense the same dbm software you can make use for a number of application whether it is uh, the that grade reporting uh, software or it is that um, payment uh, information uh, kind of software both of them are used making use of this is that about it the dbms software is general purpose in nature means we can have a common dbms software that will work for different application not only the two we explain whatever it is okay so for the entire organization maybe for the university we can keep a university database and the dbms software and this dbms software this will work fine with the, um, this um, whether it is university database or an employee database or some other uh, kind of uh, database this dbms software is something general purpose that is what we are trying to say and it will work common and again within this uh, university um application itself whether it is grade reporting fee payment whatever it is this dbm software is something common okay and it refers to the so how this uh, general purpose dbm software is working so if it is not a special purpose right special purpose means for a particular application what is the kind of data i need accordingly i will define my files right and i will be referring it so that is sp special purpose application development so when it comes to general purpose it should work for uh, any kind of data right so how it is working how this dbms software is going to work with any kind of data the catalog is going to help for that so the type of data will vary right so it will directly this dbms software will first look into the catalog then it will understand what kind of data it is what kind of structure it is being used and accordingly it will do further processing of the data so that is the idea so it refers to the catalog to know the structure of the uh, files in the specific uh, database whether it is for university database or employer database or some other database banking database etc it will look at the catalog and it will understand the particular specific database and it will <coughs> work in general right uh, in, in the same way it will work for both the database right so this is type and format of the data it will access so in traditional file processing this is not possible right so we, we need it separately um, the data is to be defined the defin def data definition is typically part of the application program itself so as part of the application program you will define the data maybe you see if you are using a c programming something you will define the data in the form of uh, this classes and all or uh, i mean c++ classes and c structure and all so like that you will define data uh, array of structures like that you can define right and then uh, you will process the data but here the, it is not like that in uh, whenever you are developing the program you can develop the program in without worrying about the data and for accessing the data we have uh, some back end part of the software so in uh, typical industry we use the term front end and back end uh, right and front end you can uh, just develop so that that will give that look and feel that GUI part and the backend software will try to interact the uh, database through this DBMS uh, database management system software okay and anyway for this particular pro application you don't have to define the data as part of it instead uh, through the with the help of DBMS software you will access the actual database actual database data will be defined separately so that kind of an independency we can achieve right hence the programs are constrained to work only with a specific database mm whose structure is declared in the application program so this we are talking about the file processing application but in um, the, the dbms approach it is different right it is general purpose so ho hope you get the uh, idea so what we are trying to say so we want our applications to be general purpose right so whether it is uh, whatever it is so that the same thing you can make use for a number of applications so now this dbms software is such a general purpose software so that this will work fine with the uh, uh, any kind of database right so uh, how it is to making uh, this general purpose uh, possible that is with the help of this catalog because whenever you are defining the database along with the database you will define the catalog also so by looking at the catalog it will understand the structure and accordingly it will work for that particular specific database so that is the idea in file processing it's not possible and, uh, and also in file processing the data is being defined as part of, part of the application program here again you don't have to define the data as part of the application program data is separately um, kept in the um, maybe in the disk in the form of database and catalog right and program you can write independently of the data so this is something we call as program data independence also we will see as a next feature and uh, by looking at the catalog and all you will understand the structure of the data and you will process the data so that kind of independency we can achieve right accordingly uh, 
what are all the details of the data uh, that are kept in the catalog you can uh, hide from the program right the, the program development you can do without worrying about the structure of the database structure of the database can change at any time okay fine um, uh, for example a particular data um, um, we are keeping student uh, some set of information a new information also you want to add okay you can add those changes will happen in the database only it will not reflect in the program so whenever the program is referring next time it will get the updated database so that is the idea so that uh, that is uh, there is another uh, terminology for that this abstraction right uh, this, uh, these things you may be familiar with uh, this uh, object oriented concept he, we can achieve here also so before moving on to that let's uh, see this um, database how it is looking so something i taken from the textbook so a sample database is given here this same example we will refer for uh, multiple um, uh, for explaining multiple concepts so this um, get an idea about this database in in your textbook also they are taking this as a uh, reference and many concepts they are explaining with the help of this so this is something called a student and course information database where uh, the student and course as name says uh, are kept right so there is a student database which is containing name of the student uh, the say the student number or roll number the class where he belongs the major the main course he is studying like computer science and all okay and there is a course database where uh, we are keeping so here the database is um, visualized like a table okay so this is one way of uh, expressing the database there are other ways also so this is something easy for us to understand so that is why they are giving the table kind of structure in uh, rows and columns okay and in uh, course table we have a course name some course code will be there like course number uh, what about the credit of the course and in which department it, belo it belongs to whether it is his department maths department or some other department and there is something called as a uh, section uh, like in which section uh, it belongs to like that okay so this is something the ter terminology the, the foreign countries are using so we may not be uh, having this kind of a structure it may be slightly different but anyway as from the textbook i take and right so there is something called a section identifier uh, so for this particular section this is a, a course to be handled and it comes under which semester semester we here with this like semester one two three here they are like a fall spring like that they are giving a semester name and uh, maybe in which year like that one who what about the instructor okay so like that on table is maintained there's a great report table where student number section identifier so for this particular student for this section uh, this is a grade he got and if you want to know, know more about the session details you can refer here 112 is a session and it is uh, handling the so if you are looking at the session you will understand that uh, the, this student uh, taken this course right and it and this is about the duration and all and this is a faculty name like that okay and uh, you know whenever you are choosing a course there will be some prerequisite right so for uh, studying dbms actually um, as per syllabus no prerequisite is given because it is something acting as prerequisite for many other subjects okay and some other subject you might see in this prerequisite before studying if you are now having an idea about that other, other subject it will be good like that so here the, the prerequisite for this course this course is a prerequisite like that okay so course numbers are just given so this is a typical example uh, they are giving and now let's see how this catalog is looking okay so uh, a brief uh, view about the catalog so catalog will give more structure related information so it's like uh, uh, here we have uh, uh, five tables given right like a student course so grade report and in each table how many columns are there so if you, new, you want to add a new column you just update this column number and accordingly you add that column okay so that by looking at the structure and when a new program is coming you will understand that now it is having four column uh, future I added uh, four five column I can just change the structure here so that is what I am trying to say now column details they are giving and uh, there is a column with um, column name name okay and this is another column with the column name student number this is co having column name class major like that okay so column names are given and what about the data type i already told you the so structure information right the description of the actual data so this is containing character of length the same maximum uh, 30 here about uh, character of length 4 integer like that it 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 may be trying to say like uh, it is of uh, some one two three four character followed by four uh, numbers like that it, it could be like that okay so a major it's a it, it may be of some enumerator type like a cs match like that different uh, major streams are there so this major type may be some enum type like that okay data types are given now uh, what about this so this is containing information about all columns right so in which uh, database table or relation it belongs to 
so then uh, don't worry about the terminology relation right now you can understand it as table okay that meaning of relation i will explain later okay table is otherwise called as relation for the time being okay so these uh, four columns belongs to student table and this course name course number etc they belongs to course table and similarly this one prerequisite table like that it is given and uh, some more details uh, typically we will keep in uh, catalog it is like internal storage format of uh, each record record is uh, typically like uh, maybe uh, one unit of information you can uh, call it as a uh, i mean one row you can call it as a record okay <coughs> so if you are looking at this um, this particular first row uh, if i am calling it as a record some record of information like it's having information about a particular student i can say that is student record okay so here um, <coughs> the name of the student is like smith uh, student number is 17 one uh, class like that and in secondary memory in the storage where you are keeping this information so in that way it is stored like name starting uh, position in the record is 1 and the length is like 30 so if it is of some fixed size it will go from 1 to 30 so that uh, student number you can start storing from 31 the location to uh, some four more location so 31 plus 4 Uh, this is length information okay so it it will be 35 35 onwards we will start storing the class information and it is just like length the one uh, byte or maybe uh, so the 36 onwards the another four location we will store this major like that okay so then th in this way you can store each and every minute details about this uh, actual database in the catalog okay so this, these are all metadata so just a feel about metadata now so that about it um, yeah three more features are there yeah let's see them quickly okay so another one is uh, the second feature the first feature we saw is self describing nature of the database and that is what we achieved with the help of that uh, uh, catalog that is what we seen and i already told you there you can uh, get a feel of that independence program data independence right so this is what explained here mainly the insulation between the program and data and data abstraction so in if you are looking at any database application the actual application maybe that uh, in uh, we use a terminology front end something that you can develop without worrying about the actual uh, data uh, what kind of data it is being used the data will be kept in the back end that is in the uh, database and uh, to handle the database and query uh, and take the data and all we will make use of the dbms software so that kind of a structure we are have so we have a very clear insulation between the application program and the data it is using right is a uh, okay yeah, and in in between we have this dbms software that will uh, take care okay so that is uh, otherwise called the program data independency also so if you but it is not the case with the file processing hope you remember for each of our application we have to define the data as part of the file particular application right uh, here the structure of the data files is embedded inside the application program so any change in the structure of the file may require change in the program also so if we don't have this kind of an insulation or independency what is the difficulty whenever you want to change the actual database structure you have to change the application program also but if they are different <coughs> you don't have to disturb your application program because whenever it wants some data it will refer the catalog and that time that structure updates you are doing right that you can do at the catalog and it will get the latest data like that it will work but here it is not like that whenever you are changing the structure of the data you have to change the application program using it also right by contrast in dbms the structure of the database is kept in uh, ca the catalog separately from the access program and this property is called a program data independence the so program and the actual data or the database is kept um, in isolation with each other right and the characteristics that allows this is something called the data abstraction so data abstraction means you can do any change and all over the actual uh, Uh, program without worrying about the data it is being referred the data and the structure uh, may change and that you will get in the program you don't have to do anything with the i mean the program development you can do without worrying about the actual structure of the data it is using so uh, that is uh, the data is getting abstracted right so we are getting an abstract view of the program without uh, worrying on the internal details right that in the details are being hidden from the application programs so that is why it is also called data abstraction 
A DBMS provides user with a conceptual representation of the data and does not include the details of the data. Details of the data is there in the catalog. So that is not part of the um, user. So DBMS um, user is concerned through DBMS software, he will get the uh, structure and it, it will take care. Okay. From the user point of view, you don't have to worry about the actual structuring of the data. Okay. So informally, um, we will present a conceptual view of the data to the user. So from the user point of view, the actual uh, implementation or the representation Presentation of the data is hidden. So instead, we will give give a conceptual view of the actual database to the user, and that is what we are achieving with the help of data model. And there are different data models, and entity relationship model is on popular data model for this conceptual data design. Okay, so anyway, data model uh, itself we will see, and this conceptual representation is something that is achieved with the help of data model informally. Okay, so it's a type of data abstraction that is used to provide this conceptual representation. So it will model the data. It is simply just like this so before starting house construction we have something called a plan right so data model is like the plan so this with this plan uh, the developer will be communicating with the user so he can't understand the actual implementation detail but by looking at the plan as a user we can understand right wh what we need and he can give suggestions uh, to the plan and that will be modified and accordingly the actual house construction will start so similarly here also actual implementation of the database you can start uh, before that you will have this plan that is data model and where you will work out whether this uh, implementation like this is okay or not for the user and if the user have some suggestions or not accordingly you will change the data model and uh, you will uh, do the further implementation later. So the data models use as a logical concept such that you can sometimes it will use this object, their properties and their relation, how these objects are related to each other. Uh, that may be easier for most of the users can understand that the computer storage concepts um, than computer so you, the user don't have to worry about the actual storage details of the data that is hidden from the user instead uh, we will give uh, a conceptual understanding of, of the actual data that the user can understand that is through these objects properties and relationships anyway we will understand this in detail we will explore this detail in our subsequent videos so now this is the third characteristic so the first character we discussed is self describing nature of the data and then we saw the insulation between data and um, program and the data abstraction now the third property is support of multiple views of data you know what is a view view is typically you, you what we have we have our uh, database right Mm, so let's take that uh, previous example we taken so this database all of you keep in mind so here we have uh, some five relations or tables like this and uh, at any time I'm not interested on uh, these tables as it is right sometimes I want to know details about a subset of students maybe those students who are in um, uh, having major CS I want to know about them only but in the student table it is as of now a, an instance is shown uh, more details will be there like uh, this table is supposed to hold information about all major like uh, maths and other departments okay but I am interested only on a subset of data let's say the in the details of the student uh, who belongs to the CSD major okay so in that case I can call it as a view so view can be a subset of the table so it can be so uh, some subset of information uh, here itself the course I'm not interested on this um, uh, CSD um, course details instead I am interested on math so that it uh, I'm, I'll be just referring this record only or if I'm interested on CS I will be referring these three records only so I I'm not going to re refer the entire data in the database instead I'll be referring a subset of it so this subset I can call as a view okay now another thing is sometimes I want to know uh, the uh, so maybe it's for that grade reporting officer he want to know the details of the student as well as he want to know some details of the grade so I may be in need of say student name student number section identifier and grade so he want to display like a Smith uh, has a grade of B in section 112 like that if that is a requirement in that case some information from the student table and some information from grade report together I want for a particular application and that time again I don't have a table containing student name student name student number section identifier and grade but I have two tables for that so what I will do I will take the columns student name student number section identifier and grade and I will make a um, 
not a permanent table but uh, something like a, a virtual table okay so i can call it also as a view so view is either a subset of records i am having in the actual database table or from multiple table i will uh, take uh, what are all the columns i want i will merge and i will make a new virtual table kind of thing and i will be calling it as a view hope you get an idea about this view now let's see for the this is on example given uh, in the textbook like uh, uh, the the grade itself that transcript report where student name course number grade semester and some some more informations are also there like course number also so from course table also they taken course number so they can give a detailed report like for this uh, student for this course with course number this one he got this kind of a grade like that he can give a very detailed report okay so this is a view this is not the actual database uh, database table that we stored right but instead uh, it's a kind of virtual table okay so this is a view this also we want okay i got the, we have a facility for this also so that is another feature of database okay and the dbms software so that will take care of this and another one is course prerequisite itself we have a table but we want to know the name of the course also hope you remember in the table we ma maintain only course number and prerequisite uh, course number okay so this also this is another example for review so a view may be a subset of the database like subset of records like what we seen already or it may contain virtual data that is derived from the database files but it is not explicitly stored somewhere a database typically has many types of users and uh, each one of them may require a different perspective or view of the data and how this view is different it can be a subset of the records of the given table or it can be a virtual Uh, table kind of thing uh, combining uh, columns from different different tables right so user may be interested on something like that so we should have a facility for providing multiple views some users may not need to aware of whether the data they refer is actually stored in a database or it is derived as a view okay so user may not be worrying about it but dbms will take care of it for you a multi user dbms whose users have a variety of distinct application must provide facility for defining multiple views like we explained for example, Example only user. Mm, uh, the two examples given in the next page, right? Next slide. The da the database may be interested only in accessing and printing the transcript of each student. A second user who is interested on uh, checking that the student has this particular prerequisite or not. So these two examples. Now the last property, I mean the fourth one given in the textbook as uh, characteristics of the database management system is sharing of multiple user. and uh, transaction processing this you will take time to understand actually over time we will understand it clearly so the thing is that if you are looking at this irctc application or um, irctc database or ba some banking database you know um, thousands or millions of users will be trying to access the database at the same time right so Uh, that is something what we call as the concurrent access to the database so when many people are trying to concurrently access the database we each one should get a feel like he is exclusively using the database right so if when i am trying to book the ticket if it is um, ch showing some change like someone else is also trying like that then i will not get a feel like whether so if i book the ticket that should be exclusively for me and when i am trying to for that particular seat in the train if someone else is also coming i also got the same seat like maybe such faults can happen if our dbm software is not um, not working in that way okay so it should take care so after making that reservation it should ensure that only one person and finally that that thing is executed by only by a single person uh, let let thousand million people try to uh, reserve a common seat but finally it will go to only a single person so that should be ensured okay so when concurrent execution is happening uh, the if there is no concurrency control part it will lead to some erroneous execution right so that will lead uh, as an example same seat may be reserved by two people so that should not happen so that kind of a um uh, power this dbms software should ha should hold right so this is what we need a multi user dbms um, database management system as its name implies must allow multiple users to access the database at the same time right and this is essential if data for, uh, for multiple application is to be integrated and maintained in a single storage like like, like the examples i given like in uh, this banking or in, so this is a must thing we can't eliminate this right otherwise it is meaningless so we need that sharing sharing should be there but when you are 
sharing the information you have to ensure that it, it is done in the correct way right so the dbms must include some concurrency control so concurrent execution is uh, that concurrency so when you are doing this concurrency con uh, concurrent execution it should not lead to any incorrect execution so that is concurrency control software is trying to achieve right so that should be there to ensure that several users trying to update the same data uh, do so in a controlled manner so that the result of the update is correct that is what we need okay you know for example when the several reservation agents are trying to assign a same example seat on a airline flight uh, the dbms uh, should ensure that each seat can be accessed by only one agent at a time for the assignment of the passenger okay let uh, many people try simultaneously that is okay final that allotment should happen only for a single agent okay and these type of applications are generally called online transaction processing application because they are working in online right online many people will try to uh, access the data and this access that is happening in an online mode is what we call as a transaction so it is more than a query right so a transaction uh, typically means uh, accessing the data that's all but uh, it, you understood the context right where we are using that terminology okay so that it has to be done in a uh, so this online transition processing applications are something uh, a very important application the dbms software and that, whether it is airline reservation or ircgc reservation banking application everywhere you should the, this concurrency uh, concurrent execution will happen and there should be some concurrency control software that is implemented as part of the dbms software a fundamental role in multi user dbms software is to ensure that the concurrent transactions operate correctly and efficiently okay yeah that about it so what we discussed in this uh, particular video is so this is something you can expect as a uh, university question even uh, like they asked before also <coughs> explain uh, the characteristics of the database approach or how database approach is uh, different from file processing approach or compare between database approach and file processing approach like that they can frame many questions and you should be able to answer them uh, with the help of this video okay and uh, first we started with the file processing approach and you understand I, I hope you got the idea the normal program uh, development that we done so far is actually like uh, the student data management everything you might have done through that C programming and all and that time you were doing that file processing kind of application now we are shifting the way we are uh, de developing the program and where we, we will make use of this database we will define the database everything and then through that DBMS software we will interact with the database and our application program we develop implement independently and the uh, front end part mainly and the back Back and part through DBMS will try to interact with the database and it will do the, uh, what is needed for you. Okay, so that um, we are having all the benefits like uh, the data self describing nature that catalog is going to help what that data and program independency, right? So uh, you can develop the program without worrying about the structure. Structure you will keep in the catalog, okay? And that about it. And accordingly, another terminology called the data ab uh, the pro data abstraction. Data is abstracted. Uh, abstract view of the data is being provided to the program. So you don't have to worry about how about the uh, actual storage details. So that is the meaning. That is the kind of abstraction we uh, attained, okay? And the third one we discussed is about um, support of multiple views and you understood what is a view, subset of the uh, records or it can be some something that merged like a virtual table kind of thing. And uh, how these views are handled, okay? So that is another burden for DBMS, not like burden, it, it is mandatory, like otherwise it is meaningless. And also another one, the DBMS is having over that file processing approaches, of course, that uh, sharing of the data and uh, when sh concurrent execution is happening that concurrent sc control schemes are also implemented as part of the DBMS. Anyway, this transaction concurrency control, uh, those things we will explore uh, more detail in our uh, last module, okay. Uh, everything we will see, okay. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, so, uh, it's all theory, theory concepts so far. We will move on to more logical things very soon. Yeah.